Hello, my name is Jared from the RLS Tech Team, and I'm going to run you through this presentation on weight and balance, the weighing procedure. This is a brief look at the process, and more information can be obtained by completing the online weight and balance course. Have you ever wondered why the nose kept wanting to pitch up, despite trimming it all the way forward? Ever just thrown baggage into the aircraft because you were running late and in a hurry? Then wondered why the aircraft over-rotated on takeoff and gave you a fright? Well, that's not something you should wonder. You should have known that the aircraft was overloaded and that the center of gravity position was most likely out of range. In these situations, the aircraft got off the ground and flew, but you were tempting fate and breaking the rules. What would happen if one day you put more in the aircraft than it could handle? If allowed to go too far out of bounds, it could result in serious damage to the aircraft, injury to persons on board, or even death. Weight and balance is an art worth mastering and practicing. Furthermore, the Finnish Department of Transport, TRAFI, identified a key risk in flying an ultralight aircraft is loss of control in flight during takeoff, approach, or landing. Contributing factors identified include problems in recognizing an imminent stall. Aircraft loading and center of gravity are also high risk factors in ultralight aviation. The principal safety risk in flying an overweight aircraft is that excess weight changes the flying properties of the aircraft above all, increasing the stall speed. As the weight of the aircraft increases, the critical angle of attack at which flow separation occurs and the aircraft goes into a stall is attained at a higher speed than the stall speed of a lighter aircraft. The safety margin to the stall speed decreases when taking off, approaching or landing with excess weight. These are the most critical phases of flight. At the moment, recreational aviators are not necessarily well informed about how excess weight changes the flight properties of their aircraft. Most stall practice is conducted in level flight at idle power. How does excess weight affect my aircraft performance? A heavy aircraft will have a higher takeoff speed, a longer takeoff ground run, reduced rate of climb, reduced angle of climb, a shorter range, reduced cruise speed, increased stall speed, higher landing speed, and a longer landing roll. It's not only the overloading of the aircraft that you need to be concerned about, but also the distribution of the weight. Your aircraft has center of gravity limits, and any loading that puts the center of gravity outside those limits will seriously impair your ability to control the aircraft. The center of gravity is the point about which an aircraft would balance if suspended. The center of gravity limits are the forward and aft points within which the center of gravity must fall if the aircraft is to operate normally and safely. A center of gravity at the forward limit requires backward pressure on the elevator control and nose up trim. A forward center of gravity makes it difficult to rotate the aircraft for takeoff and difficult to flare for landing. A center of gravity at the aft limit requires forward pressure on the elevator control and nose down trim. An aft center of gravity can have the tendency for the aircraft to rotate in a dangerously nose high attitude. The further aft the center of gravity is, the more difficult it is to recover from a stall event. It is also important to note that if the aircraft is operated above the maximum takeoff weight, the center of gravity limits are null and void. RL's aircraft have been weighed with uncalibrated scales for decades, and some aircraft empty weights may not be accurate. If the aircraft's empty weight is incorrect, when the aircraft is loaded to its maximum takeoff weight, it may actually be operating above its maximum takeoff weight. Add another variable such as an uncalibrated airspeed indicator and we are increasing our risk of accident. To this point, we have briefly discussed why weight and balance is important. Let's now get into the correct method of weighing the aircraft. Before you start, let's consider what we need. Have a hangar to weigh your aircraft in? The hangar must have a solid floor and doors that close to prevent the wind causing any inaccuracies. There should also be sufficient space to move the aircraft on and off the scales. Make sure you have the correct equipment. Calibrated scales to ensure correct reading, plumb bob and spirit level, chalk line and chalk, measuring tape, ramps, chocks and perhaps pieces of timber to aid leveling. Make sure you have the appropriate recording documentation. This is available to download from the RL's website under forms. 
ensure you have the manufacturer's manual for the required data, such as reference data and position, leveling means for weighing, maximum takeoff weight, maximum baggage weights and their respective reaction arms, center of gravity limits, usable and unusable fuel capacities, reaction arm for pilot and passengers, Aircraft must be weighed dry, with the flaps up, full engine oil, coolant, hydraulic fluid, unusable fuel, seats and canopy in the flap position. RALs have purchased a set of calibrated scales for members' use free of charge. Members will, however, need to cover the cost of transportation to and from Canberra. These scales are battery operated, therefore do not require any electrical power supply. With version 4 of the RALs technical manual, Members can become weight and balance endorsees by completing the online weight and balance course. Weight and balance endorsees can weigh their own, uh, their own aircraft and supply RALs with the weight and balance report. Make sure the aircraft is level. The manufacturer should state the leveling point. It is acceptable to level the aircraft by inflating or deflating the nose wheel tyre and or the oleo strap. Small pieces of timber may also be used for levelling the aircraft. Ensure the scales are set to zero, including any pieces of wood used for levelling the aircraft. Move the aircraft onto the scales and ensure the aircraft again is level. Record the weights at each wheel. Pull the aircraft off and repeat this process. The weights must be within 2%. If not, start from the beginning and reweigh. Take the average of the readings and record them on the aircraft weighing summary. Before we start to measure, let's look at a diagram of the aircraft to be measured in order to establish the points we are going to record. The manufacturer has stated the reference datum is 70 inches or 1778 millimeters forward of the wing leading edge. D2 is the distance between the center line of the nose wheel and the wing leading edge. D1 and D3 represent the distances between the center line of the left and right main wheels and the wing leading edge. Use the plumb bob to plot the center line of the nose wheel on both sides. Use the plumb bob to plot the position of the wing leading edge on both wings. Use the plumb bob to plot the center line of the left and right main wheels. Use the plumb bob to plot a point at the spinner and a point at the tail cone to enable a line to be drawn down the center line of the aircraft. Use the chalk line to make sure the lines are straight between the points to enable accurate measurements when using the measuring tape. Now that we have measured all of our points, we can record them in the aircraft summary in order, to, in order to determine our empty weight center of gravity. The horizontal distance from the datum to the main wheel was calculated as 2383 millimeters aft of the datum and therefore a positive number. The horizontal distance from the datum to the nose wheel was calculated as 768 millimeters aft of the datum and therefore also a positive number. Because the datum is an imaginary point forward of the aircraft, all distances will be positive. If the datum was located at the firewall, we would end up with a negative distance. The average of our two weighings are recorded here, for each of the three wheels. Our total empty weight is 344 kgs. The moment arms for the main gear and nose wheel are recorded here, in the moment arm column. To calculate the moments, we multiply the weight by the moment arm. Therefore, 142.5 kgs multiplied by 2383 millimeters gives us 339577 kg millimeters. Repeat the calculation for the starboard and nose wheel calculation. Total all the moments to give us 719. 564 kg millimeters and then divide by our empty weight or 344 kgs to give us the empty weight center of gravity of 2092 millimeters 
aft of the datum. Ensure all pages of the weighing summary are complete, including the equipment list of items on board the aircraft at the time of weighing. The weight and balance report is valid for an indefinite period, subject to Civil Aviation Order 100.7. The aircraft will need to be reweighed if the aircraft empty weight has changed by more than 0.5% of the aircraft's maximum takeoff weight or 10 kgs, whichever is the greater. Therefore, for Ariar's aircraft, it is 10 kgs. Furthermore, if the empty weight center of gravity has changed by more than 2% of the maximum permissible center of gravity range, or 5 mm, whichever is the greater, the aircraft will need to be reweighed. The purpose of this presentation was not to cover everything, but to provide some awareness on weight and balance and to encourage members to complete the online weight and balance course. Thank you for watching this presentation from Recreational Aviation Australia's Training Development Series. Thank you.